Okay, welcome to the Monday, January 6th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let members and staff introduce themselves. I'm Martha Smirsky. Hannah Smith. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Seth. Benjamin Cheney. Unless anybody else has anything to add, I'm, I'm not going to go through the uh, description of our committee that we're advisory to the Development Review Board. You've been here a number of times, so sure. you know the drill by now. And in, unless anybody else has anything to add, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Here's a second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. And we will go forward to the first applicant, 66 Main Street, Overlake Park. Come up and have a seat and describe your parking proposal. Sure, thank you very much. Um, this is actually, this is a proposal that uh, was approved uh, previously. And I think it was six or seven years ago that we had this identical proposal approved. But the idea here being we are looking to um, uh, put seven parking spaces into uh, our vacant lot at 66 Main Street with uh, some fencing in front of it to act as kind of like safe screening, but also something that is kind of pleasing to look at with flower boxes on top of it. Um, the, the plan for that parking, it's not necessarily for public use. We would permit those spaces out. It would be for three staff in my office, including myself, two Charlie staff, two, uh, and two additional um, spaces that probably will go to either a long-term apartment tenant or somebody who's a, who's a retail tenant in the downtown core. Um, so the idea isn't to have a lot of movement in and out or to use the spaces as kind of like metered rental spaces there. Um, the parking lot would be graded, uh, paved, lined, and we would put uh, up signs designated that those spaces were reserved for those particular folks. Just a quick question. Is this area between the 70 and the park, proposed parking, is that used for parking or is that just? It is not meant to be used for parking, but it's not my, it's not my space. That, that's the. It's that 68 that, Main Street property. That's, that's the 68 Main Street property. Okay. So that's, be, that's behind what is now the, the yarn store. Notions. Notions, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can, this doesn't give a very good illustration of that depth but yeah. it's kind of this area that is along okay this wall the here. 68 main actually on that space all the way back to the to this line um maybe i'm, I'm just asking for I'm, information for yeah I'm, I'm not entirely sure i believe they do okay yeah i'm not i'm not quite sure where that boundary goes to i think that it is in line with our charlie o's building okay there and Charlie O's is 70 Main Street? Charlie is, right? is 70, yeah. Okay. I was having trouble trying to picture what where your parking would be. So you would have the backs of cars up against that right of way, mm -hmm. the alley that comes through. Uh, is that what you're thinking? Not a, this, this is your measurements. Mm -hmm. This is a standard parking space ending here. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to, sorry, this is just easier. If you go to the one that was marked up through the DPW comment, so there's a different site plan that has some yellow highlighting on it. So this is per the DPW comments. Mm -hmm. There's some distances down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So there's a 12 foot uh, aisle between the back of the um, parking spaces to, but the, until you right. get to the actual the right alley. of way yeah. to the alley. Because okay. this alley is really a, a one car alley. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> DBW is saying that there can't be parking here for snow storage? Uh, that's not for snow storage. That's to allow at least one car to sit there waiting for another parking space or to get in. 
um, and not be blocking the sidewalk and let those other cars, those five front spaces, still be able to get out or maneuver. They want one, they, there's a, there's a, uh, uh, I don't think it's a B71 standard that there has to be a throat to get in and be able to get out of the public right of way and not be blocking parked cars. Not be blocking other people in. So that yellow area needs to be free for a car to sit there waiting if need be and not be blocking pedestrian or vehicular traffic in the main right of way. Okay. So, <laughs> so and the concern is that you can't park here because because you'll be blocking those vehicles in well, okay, you, while you're waiting while for somebody you're waiting. across while the you're waiting. sidewalk uh well, no, if no some, while you're waiting for somebody to get if, if somebody out was of those backing out of one of those spaces the you're proposing that if somebody was backing out of one of those spaces it's now blocking somebody from getting in and people trying to be across on the sidewalk if the spaces are all designated, why would you be waiting? I, well, because this person may also be waiting to get in here. Because <coughs> there's a big well, parking somebody's back backing out. Yep. I mean, I feel like it's just like the other one, I mean, this is DPW. We have no jurisdiction yep. here. I get it. So I'll just shut up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, and it's something that I, uh, you know, as zoning administrator, I'm not going to. I understand. Tell DPW that their standards aren't right, when, especially when the standards like this, I think, I come down from the state. I understand. So it's <clears throat> and again, our, seven to five. our purview is only on the design, yeah. not necessarily rights of access. Sure. So what's the, that's not our call. What's the uh, decision regarding the fencing and mulch? It's decision 30, 30, as in? 30 lineal feet of fencing and mulch. Right. So there's a... You, you sent me the email with your, your plans for it, how high it was. Sure, so the, so the fencing, which is uh, going to be wood, kind of with flower boxes mm -hmm. on top, it's going to be 42 inches high, uh, slatted so that, um, you know, to help kind of with line of sight below and above folks who are like kind of coming out of there will be able to see through and also over it and uh, flower boxes are generally pretty. <laughs> so we figured we would put some of those on there and kind of maintain those throughout at least the months when flowers grow in Vermont. Um, so again, the design resembles the back of the uh, black door. Black door, yeah. So, right, I saw design. that. So that yeah. the flower boxes are towards the sidewalk, or the other way I think they would be right uh, right up against the sidewalk, basically. Okay. So the fence is held back at this time. From so you're not hanging over the sidewalk. Well, I guess it wouldn't be hanging yeah. over the sidewalk, right? right? Yeah. And then the, the overall 30 foot length just demarcates your overall distance to right away. That is to the right away from that's the length of the of, yeah horizontal. The, 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 the space and the axis and right. Um, and that meets just your your standard um, front yard. Zoning requirements for fencing maximum heights. That's all within the zoning regulations allowances, um, as well as we've run it by Department of Public Works, and they have no issues with line of sight with that. Okay. Um, it was important to them that pedestrians be able to see through to see if cars are coming, as well as people <coughs> be able to see out if they're trying to exit both for vehicles coming and pedestrians. Right. Sorry, I missed that while coughing. You're saying that. DPW is requesting that that fence be something you can see through? Yeah, they don't want it solid. Um, and they're, they're because of line of sight issues and safety issues. <clears throat> in the winter, what, what will you do? Just pull the boxes? Or are they built in? I think I figured that they would be built in. We would probably just kind of replant them every season. <laughs> and what, what is this for? What species? Uh, this is just a pressure tree that we were figuring that that probably would weather the elements best. We've had good luck with it. That's what it is at the Black Tor. And you can just dig through to put your four by fours in and nice. mount your fencing to the those verticals. That, right. That was the idea. 
Is there any fencing or anything proposed to delineate the lot line back here as cars are pulling in? Uh, we were gonna just we were going to just put kind of curb stops mm -hmm. in there, um, but no, there is not any okay. anything proposed for that area. And the signs will just be on posts. Just on posts. Right there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not a, a residential area back there, you're not trying to separate it from, you know, it's basically, right now it's used back there as sort of just a parking yes. area. The zoning requirements don't really require additional screening between okay. those two uses, Cut. as far as I can tell. Okay. After you, Seth. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that so doesn't mean DRC can't pipe up about it, but. I'm just curious as to why, why you selected this fence. Um, why I selected why this particular offense, fence? Why offense in general? Um, we needed I, we needed something uh, to create a, a boundary area. Uh, it needed to we needed to be able to see through it. We figured that um, s there was likely potential for damage to whatever kind of screening was going to be there because of snow removal, vandalism, things like that. This is an easy fence to kind of like fix and repair various pieces of. Um, so that was part of the thinking. The other idea, as Meredith said, is you can see through it. Um, and we had we had put it up in the downtown district, so it was something that had kind of aesthetically been approved. So those were the three thoughts. A, a raised bed wouldn't be something that would be considered. I, know, I would to need to. I would little, need to look back. It seems at, a little out of context. I would need to look back at the yeah. site plan requirements. I can look at that right now while you discuss. Or but there, I mean, there's some screening options. requirement because it's a parking lot. There needs to be something there. My questions are along the lines of Seth's, and more interested in what are the DPW things that we need. The in, DPW. Well, not DPW. Okay. The uh, <clears throat> design review. No, like that it's see through, like the other jurisdictions that are saying, okay, if you're going to build this thing, it's got to be. Right, whatever you, if it's a fence or a wall, it cannot interfere in line of sight, yep. both for pedestrians and vehicular and you know, bicycle traffic. That, that line of sight standard doesn't necessarily have a particular standard to it. It's sort of. Uh, that's more of an engineered judgment call, but they were happy with the height and the see-through ability. Right, is the 42 inches a magic number? Uh, four and a half feet is the maximum height. 32 inches is not necessarily a maximum, like a, a magic number itself. The four and a half feet Right, we, we did, we, yeah, we chose 42 inches, figuring that with growth on top of that, it would keep us kind of below that 48 inches, or or what is it for? Four and a half feet. Four and a half feet, so 54 inches. So screening is a requirement for this type of parking, even though we're right up against the street. It's the same thing over at Capitol Plaza when you drive into where the Northfield Bank is between the Stone Church and the Capitol Plaza. When you drive in there, they put that iron fencing up. <clears throat> Again, it's see-through. Well, just hold on one second. I mean, it was that, this one reason you started with the fencing is because that was part of what was required in your previous, uh, or what you proposed and was accepted in your previous application. That, that's right. This and that uh -huh. was, um, I mean, a lot of the reason that that was was because the last time we were here and speaking to deciders, some of you who might even be here, Steve, maybe, um, that was that was a choice that was acceptable at the time. And screening was a requirement, and separation between vehicles and pedestrians was a requirement. And I guess that was a de decidedly appropriate compromise there, and was good enough looking? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> so what, is there a height on the screening, a minimum height on the screening that's required? It's not a minimum, no. So what? What, okay, well, what, what is the definition of screen? <laughs> <laughs> <It's just laughs> See, part of, of part of the issue here is that you're dealing 
you're dealing with in a district that technically is exempt from landscaping, right? No. <coughs> I, I need, hold on, just give me a minute, okay, to read. Because I, I didn't, my, it's not like I did a staff report for today. My line of thought here is that <coughs> it would be nice to have something different. It seems that this fence is not going to last. It's going to get beat on quickly. I know you can repair it. It's easy to repair, but it just seems like it's going to be an ongoing maintenance issue. And it seems a little out of context being right up to the sidewalk. It's not in a residential neighborhood. It's downtown. I know it's on the back side, of the second story of of the building adjacent, but um, if we could come up with a more elegant solution, whether landscaping or raised bed, that is within the definition of screening, mm -hmm. then I think it would be much more successful, much much more resilient to abuse. So it, it doesn't have to be a fence. Screening may include natural or man-made elements, including landscaped buffers of trees and shrubs, earthen berms, Fences, walls, screens, camouflage, or similar mechanisms. Um, so you know, it, it, and it doesn't have to be, you know, a screen. Screening does not need to be that all views of the area or element to be screened are fully blocked. Rather, screening should be used to soften and break up views and create visual interest elsewhere on the site so that the area or element to be screened no longer dominates the view. So it doesn't have to be a fence. There needs to be some sort of break between the sidewalk and where the parking spaces start and where the paved area starts. Yeah. So technically, it could be a landscaped area with some trees in it in between the sidewalk and where the parking spaces Sold start. System. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I am all for some sort of fence there, I, whatever that word means. Mm -hmm. But I'm with Seth that I think it is an opportunity to do something far more interesting than that. Uh, Which doesn't need more money either. I mean, it can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it might, but I think also that Jesse is open to, has demonstrated an openness to interesting ideas. I think he's trying to propose something that he knows has been accepted in the past and not necessarily trying to rock right. the boat. Right. And so it, I think there could be an opportunity to do something that's far more interesting. Mm -hmm. Seth, so. were you thinking like raised beds with flowers in them? Is that yeah, what I mean, you're thinking? Yeah, raised bed with some sort of landscaping mm -hmm. in there. I mean, it seems. Mm -hmm. But how high does it have to be? You, the idea of, of the visual, mm -hmm. of being able to see through, is to see as you're driving out to be able to see on the sidewalk some kid running. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Uncontrolled, yeah. a high enough, twenty feet ahead of his mother who's screaming at him you, to slow down. You know the salt <laughs> spreader that's on the back of the little. Has to be higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> Which what I mean, a couple, uh, maybe eighteen inches. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, it could be potentially like several planters, so there would still be yeah. visibility between them, right? As long as. And with that, you wouldn't necessarily have to put in a gate and a fence to provide pedestrian access, like. We had talked briefly about, right? I emailed you about. Right, because mm -hmm. it's free flow. Because it's a free flow. Yeah. Oh, that's good. that's nice. So as the. I mean, I'm open to recommendation. Really, what's most important to me is to be able to um, have a project that people are comfortable um, passing through. So, do you think that planters is? Um, am I hearing planters here? Or sh or shrub. You know, are you? Do you want to make a recommendation, or do you want to? a redesign or what do you how are you comfortable dealing with this procedurally I'm willing to make my opinion no <laughs> okay recommendation I mean three beds raised maybe 18 inches high plus or minus I don't know about vegetation wise I have no clue it's not my area but whatever is salt resistant and I mean, would you want to see it <laughs> as a year round or would you want to replant? I mean, it's a matter of how much maintenance you want to put into it. Um, I guess I would, if it was going to be plantings, I would want something that was pretty resilient. I wouldn't want to have to replant. I'd put something in that was 
you know, pretty pretty rugged. Winter, summer, a, a survivor. Yeah. Yeah, that would be the that would be the idea. So raised beds, 18 inches high, plus or minus, some sort of vegetation that is salt resistant, mm -hmm. and um, then perforations through it that allow people to go through. So maybe it's maybe it's three or four beds that allow for about a five foot opening in between each. And so, are you when you say raised beds, are you thinking like a plant, like planter boxes? Could be. Or yeah. what? Could be. I know I, you're going fence, right? That's yeah, I'm not going to simplify this with my s suggestions, but um, <laughs> that I think it's a, a unique opportunity to do something pretty cool and do something that has some artistic value to it that is possibly more interesting than some planter boxes, but that it would require a little bit more thought and some sort of demonstration of what that may be. And so that's that's not helpful for moving this process along at the moment. So, another, so you're voting for coming back, basically? I would vote, yeah, I mean, I think, I feel like there's a way that we could approve a project with some sort of like space holder and a default if, 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 if and when the applicant doesn't want to resubmit but feels like, okay, this is, a planter box is good enough, great, but if they want to resubmit with a new idea, there's room to do that. I imagine you're not trying to do this next week. That, are you going to try and pave this winter? No, no hot mix this winter. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be, it, we wouldn't be doing anything until late April, early May. Right. Yeah. So maybe it makes sense just to table it and come back. Yeah, I think we should give a nod to some direction that says, yes, this is a viable project. Yes, you know, this, this is the direction. I mean, I think we owe him that. Yeah. What do you want to do, Jesse? Before it becomes a viable project, will the public have a chance to weigh in on this before a vote on a viable project? Yes, I mean, if you, they come back with some other suggestions, uh, we can, you know, look at the proposal and then take any public comment before we do a, a final vote on the project. Well, and since he's here today, we should... Can I? Yeah. Can I Go ahead. Yeah, just come up to the microphone, sure. please. Introduce yourself. Absolutely. And Richard Shear, and I live at 39 Loomis Street, near Main Street. And uh, in the interest of fairness, my wife uh, has a downtown store. Uh, the two dogs are part of our family. Um, I see this. We, Jesse might be here a lot more frequently than we were. Eight years ago, we were here once to get a sign in front of the quirky pet, and uh, we came back for a flag that didn't get approved. Uh, but boy, to say that what happened during the days when the flag wasn't approved means the flag wouldn't be approved today, it just doesn't hold to me. I mean, it's times change, circumstances change. And my feeling and our feeling, my wife and I, we stand by the... Um, Public Works, we do not want to see ingress, egress to that back parking area in any way impeded. I mean, that's a serious issue. I sat on the, on the parking committee for several years. We looked into that. Uh, and the Transportation Committee has been looking into that. And the master plan, the city master plan, the downtown master plan looks into that. Anything that might jeopardize ingress, egress to that back area should be taken seriously. It should, under no circumstances, be seven spaces. If it is to be, it should be five spaces. And if it's five spaces, then your discussion of that fence up front really has very little meaning because the fence can move back to in front of, of those cars. It doesn't have to sit next to the sidewalk. And the fence, if it's sitting back, doesn't have to be four and a half feet tall. It can be eight feet tall. And you can hide those cars, you know, at a, with a six to eight foot tall fence sitting further back in the lot. That leads to another question. I, again, this, this seems so premature to me in a process sense. I don't see planning weighing in on this. I don't see transportation weighing in on this. 
when planning's been talking for the last seven years about infill in the downtown, commercial infill in the downtown. And it was never the intent to have a street side parking lot on either State or Main Street. That was never the intent of infill housing. So basically, I would like to see this tabled. If it's not tabled, I will challenge it to design review in order to slow the process down so that planning can weigh in, the planning committee, and so the transportation committee can weigh in if it comes in at seven spaces rather than five. If it comes in at five spaces, there's no reason for the transportation committee to weigh in. But there's every reason for the planning committee to inform you of what their intent was, not only in terms of infill now, but of the master downtown plan that's being proposed. In none of those plans that went in this chamber a few weeks ago, was there a downtown parking lot on Main Street? albeit even a small parking lot. None of those plans included that. And it does change the aesthetic of downtown that we're trying and investing mightily to achieve. So in my mind, as I told Jesse when I walked in, this is not the question of five parking spaces. You know, he's free to do with his land as he sees fit if they're filtered off and blocked off so that you're not looking at them. Um, but it's the question of whether this meets the integrity of our downtown vision. And we have DPW weighing in on this, but we don't have planning weighing in. And if it went before design review, or development review, I should say, I'm certain that planning would weigh in on this. Now, if planning says that my view of infill is wrong, so be it. You know, my, my view is wrong then. But if planning were to say that my view is correct, it seems to me that this is premature. So to be talking about what kind of, of bedding we have next to the sidewalk presupposes seven spaces. Otherwise, that's not an issue. That kid running there is not an issue at all, you know, because you'll be able to see that as you come out of that alley, because there'll be nothing there impeding it. So that's where I saw things going off rail a little bit and you getting ahead of your skis is talking about this as if that fence up there were the only option in this when it's not. And so a healthy discussion of holistically what the plan also might look like might be in order. You know, and, and, and it's appropriate to this, having served on, having sat before and uh, seen my wife present before the committee, it's the kind of thing that I think the committee should be doing. I mean, you even asked a question, the you know, none of these members were on at the time, eight years ago. But I was sitting there listening as someone said, what does a red dog mean? What's, what's, the, red, what's the wooden red dog for? Uh, you know, which is a representation that's in the window. But, and there was even a discussion of the molding there. I mean, you have gotten into micro detail before, but in this case, it's more of a question of macro detail. Not discussing the proposal as submitted, but discussing the proposal as it could be uh, within the parameter of five rather than seven. And I, you know, again, as she said, that's DPW's purview, and DPW has made their stand. So I assume that, that seven will not be and that five will be. So does the design for seven, is that the only design possible when the design comes back for five? So I would send this back for reconsideration given the param new parameters that DPW has set, which we think are, are perfectly normal parameters. You do not want cars blocking the ingress-egress onto Main Street from that back parking lot under any circumstance. That's, that's my view on this. I thought that we were going with five. As uh, I mean, that's that's basically what we've come realized today. The DPW is, is insisting on those. That, that's, that's within this report. That's yeah. That's within that package. Is the comments from DPW? Um, thank you for thank you for that, Richard. I appreciate the time. Um, I don't intend to move the fence or any kind of screening from the front of the lot back to uh, closer to where five spaces. Uh, 
may be. I want to keep that fencing right up where I proposed it to be. Mm -hmm. And that's for snow removal. And so that I have snow removal in the front mm -hmm. area there. And an eight foot fence, though I understand what you're trying to achieve there in the back, it is too high and feels dangerous to me as far as obfuscating people's views in and out of there as far as folks coming in and out of uh, this lot or otherly. So um, that's not a consideration of mine. If you're not able to use the full seven spaces, do you have you thought about any alternatives to the use of those two spaces behind, either in the summer for you know a, a patio of some kind since you can't park there, find some other use for that, or if in fact you did move the fence back, is there space up front to have a food cart or something there? I, I'm not really sure. Okay. Those, no, those comments just, only got passed around between yeah. DVW and JC yeah. itself today. I'm just uh, throwing that out yeah. as, you know, looking for a, a use for those spaces, maybe seasonally, since you can't park there. Mm -hmm. Sure. I will think of something. <laughs> or, I, or not, I guess. I, we need to, I need to decide if uh, a five-space parking lot is really viable because... Uh, Based on what I have for parking there right now, it's it would be five is a small net gain, and it's and it's an expensive proposition to grade it and pave it, it and line it and put in whatever Ben is going to put together here. I know it's going to be genius. <laughs> it's not going to be free, you know. And um, and so um, really, I don't know. Maybe maybe without seven. It, it doesn't make, make sense. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I'm pretty sure that at only five, uh, it's tight for me. Um, and so that is a discussion outside of the aesthetics of this that I will take up with uh, Public Works and planning and Richard and, and whomever, and maybe we can come up with something workable and maybe we just have, uh, What's there? That's obviously not what I think anybody wants. So. Okay, so we'll table it. You can table it. Look, go back to the drawing board, uh, both finances and design <laughs> issues, and sure. take a look at what your options are. Uh, as far as um, screening as proposed, whether you know, it's on the street where it's moved back from there. Do you got do do you have guidance for me if we're coming if we're going to be coming back here? Um, as far as the aesthetic of things, not necessarily the location. Are you are you thinking that the planters are the move, or do we have do we have another idea that is preferable? <laughs> I mean, I have all kinds of ideas percolating, but this is the mm -hmm. first I've seen it, and yeah. I haven't really had a chance. If, if you were to move it back, mm -hmm. then obviously as cars move forward, like you were talking about, it, now you're ahead of any fencing or screening, you're ahead of that. So now you have clear view of the sidewalk, depending on what else might be proposed for that front section if, if you were to move the fence back. So mm -hmm. that would change the requirements as far as the screening of the parking. And I, I mean, I, um, I mean, it's still... It's, maybe I don't understand yeah, clearly enough. I mean, it's still it's still technically in the front yard. You're still limited to four and a half feet height. So technically in the front, because it's not really a side yard or a rear yard yes. fence or wall. Um, but you, <coughs> you, you have some other options for the type of fencing. Hmm. Because if it's, it's not, farther back. If it's farther back, because like you said, you aren't... Cars can get in front of it before they're in <coughs> in the pedestrian or vehicular way. So you mm -hmm. have some other options. Okay. Well, the other thing again, by planting and just <coughs> experience, it's tough to find anything you can put on a planter that will survive more than a year or two. I'm not in disagreement I mean, with you about that. You, yeah. You're Raced. gonna, you know, if you put planters on a planter <laughs> box, there's not enough soil in there. You're not gonna. It's not gonna survive. You might get two years out of it. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
I mean, we've we've done evergreens and large planters, big deep ones, you know, three, two, three feet deep. Um, two, three years, and it's called evergreen, not ever brown. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if you were to move back, you might be able to plant a low-growing shrub and get it in, down into the ground, and you mm -hmm. can plant something. I mean, we've got use that are still green after 25 years that are planted into the ground because you have enough soil and they've survived pretty well in the winter. Mm -hmm. So again, that gives you some other options as far as screening. You could actually have plants, uh, a line of shrubs or something, and again, set back far enough so now that the cars are driving ahead of that. And that gives you an option to maybe have another use of the space between the sidewalk Bunches. and that screening. Mm -hmm. Benches would be nice. I was thinking that too. Benches, Benches facing the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. yes, right. Ben benches and room for a food cart. Food cart. Food cart benches, something like you've done in the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do take Richard's point that like being able to get through here is nice, especially if there's like traffic mm -hmm. kind of parked here that it's like tight for a pedestrian to walk through there. Oh yeah. And well, that's making it possible for somebody to walk through there if it's going to be a parking lot and not a building that you wouldn't be able to walk through uh, and this is supposed some amount of this has to remain open it feels like it would be nice to have that be permeable for somebody to walk through I mean your spaces are eight feet six inches wide so two spaces is roughly 17 well, 17 feet so that gives a significant amount of space to create a a small parklet. Can I ask a question, Jesse? Could that uh, be can an you come up to the mic Charlios? Can you come up to the oh, microphone sorry. so that the public can hear? You understand commercial zoning, I don't. Would could that be an ancillary patio for Charlios, even though there's a business in between? I don't know with the new zoning. We had been approved for that with old older zoning, but uh, then uh, some neighbors who weren't particularly fond of us decided to appeal it. Neighbors who weren't me. <laughs> neighbors who weren't even you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that also, that's also liquor license issues, even more than zoning. Right, how do you get the liquor from one building to It was a, uh, there, there was, um, I realize that this is not what we're talking about, <laughs> but there was like a shut, there was a shuttling agreement that we came up with that seemed to uh, be acceptable to the Department of Liquor Control. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how far away? Because it, it like Positive right. Pies Parklet, I mean, they cross right. the sidewalk with it, but it's right in front of their, their building. Um, so It would have been, I guess, 19 feet uh, 6 inches <laughs> here <laughs> <laughs> to, go, to get across there. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, do you want to we'll table it? Seems like you we'll can go back to the drawing like we'll, board and look at it. Seems like we'll, we'll table it, um, I guess. So to table, we need to do it to a date certain to then come back? So two weeks from today or the first? What is two weeks from today? Today uh, is the 6th, 6, 6 and 14th, 20. Well, yeah, it's the 21st. It's a 21st. Tuesday meeting or okay. the one after that is February 3rd. Okay, I can't make the twenty-first meeting. Okay, so the February third. February third still sure. gives you a couple of months away <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, yes. So um, we are tabling this, and are you looking for anything in particular from me, other than uh, a definitive new screening plan and? Uh, hard answer about number of spaces. Yes, those are the those are the two screen screening yeah. options. Yep. And and again, as Department of Public Works is requiring a maximum of five spaces based on the amount of mm -hmm. property you have. So based on five spaces, screening and whatever you might propose, patio benches or or just Path. leave that open. Uh, something. Yeah. Okay. I think that's enough guidance. 
I'll try. I'll try to bring back something uh, that makes you all happy. <laughs> well, it's got to work for you too. No, I, exactly. Yeah. I won't bring back something that yeah. I'm unhappy with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We didn't think you would. Yeah. <laughs> so do I hear a motion to table this application until February? Second. Second. All in favor of tabling? Okay. Okay. Thank you all for your time. We'll see you in February. See you in February. Maybe I'll see you around on the street. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Thanks, guys. Uh, we don't have an applicant for our 89 Main Street. Um, do you want to give me a minute to run down and check my email, or do we just? What do you do in that situation normally? Uh, it depends. Sometimes I go down and see. Uh, my biggest problem right now is my cell phone completely died, so I could try and call them from downstairs, or we can just tell them they have to come back to the next meeting. I would tell them that they have to come back. It's kind of like, you know. <laughs> That's what I would tell them. If you, if you, well. No. So we what's, yeah. we did skinny and so doing for a vent on the side of the building. Are they moving? No, the they're there. That's where they are. That's where the kitchen is. So this is the entrance to the cellular at at and This is where their kitchen is, back behind the area where you order. Mm -hmm. um, and they need to put in a new vent. So the actual fan out is up on the roof where you can't see it, but the ductwork, this is the only place where the ductwork will come out, can come out. <coughs> yep. Um, so I, I had suggested, they, they had said that they were going to paint it originally. Is that what they still, I asked them to maybe consider other options, but I haven't heard back from them. Um, yeah, it's still the same thing. They were going to try and paint it to match the building. Um, um, Meredith, sorry. I know it's not yeah. my turn anymore. Uh, you're going to email me all of that information? I'll, I'll follow up with you tomorrow. Cool. And we can always meet and discuss options. That's great. And we said the third. Yes. Okay. Really? Wow. This looks terrible. This uh, is not <laughs> possible. So they're, they're proposing painting it to match the building. I went back to them because I know we've had issues before where chimneys, if you paint it, it voids any warranty. Yeah. And this is very similar to a chimney. Maybe it's not quite as hot, but it's going to be pretty hot. This is um, a public art project. And so, well, they, they? That's, I actually suggested to them whether or not they can do something to actually make it more like public art, some sort of. Do they have venting now? I, I honestly don't know. I don't know what they have for venting right now. Um, I mean, there's an existing just river vent, I guess, <laughs> right there where that's coming out. Um, existing lunar, but that really wrecks the entire facade. Yeah. yeah I don't well, know. it maybe it's an opportunity to fix it, but not with just the. Uh, I don't know if they're uh, trying to do there. higher heat stuff in there, and that's why they need the new ventilation system. Well, run it through know. the building and through the roof, not outside the building. For some reason, they can't do it that way, according to this. We explored other routes for the vent, and they are, there are no viable alternatives. That seems hard to believe. That's the most god awful ugly thing that you could possibly it is, do it's in awful. the building. I <laughs> <laughs> um, I, do you want me to run downstairs and see if I have any comment emails from them? I'm trying to reach them, or they already got it. Maybe they reconsidered. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I mean they've had notices a few different. I emailed them and then Audra reminded them about the meeting. I think it's really it would be really unfortunate. So I can I always go to them with that that reading from the DRC and see if they can <clears throat> redesign somehow. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, thank you, Jesse. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, guys. I mean, even if it's the same color, it's not like it's not going to be noticeable. No. It's, no. No, it's, it's. No, I think it would have to have some. I mean, I think it's a terrible idea, but some public art sort of way of making it. Yeah. Read not venting, but something interesting coming off the building. And that's basically what I said to the doctor. I saw this and then went to Mike <laughs> and asked them what 
I bet it would even be better if they had some kind of flat panel vent that could come out of the sign pan, even if it projected slightly. That would be better than, I mean, this thing is visible <laughs> everywhere. From an airplane. <laughs> yeah, why, I guess I don't know enough about venting, but why would it have to go all the way up the building? No, um, please do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's often that's the way it works in an effort to get them the heat and the grease and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking so it's maybe just because of what's actually coming out of it. it grease right. coming If it's grease laden, then that's an issue in distance, overall distance from the source to yeah. the vent yeah. is also another issue. But coming I'm directly up is probably the better way. I'm assuming the old coffee corner location where uh, right, the stone. vents out of the side yeah. where yeah. Bluestone is. The grill's right there. And the grill's right there. I'm assuming that, and I'm not sure if that's grandfathered or if that's still possible. I don't see how it could have been. It was a new business that went in. Uh, but wasn't the vent, the vent was there before. Right. Right. Was the they still vent. have to be code. Yep, and that's, I, that's all building code. Right. So. They Although should. I don't know if they didn't change anything inside with the, if they didn't change anything, I'm not sure that they'd have to meet new building code if the, like, all the stoves and ventilation system were the same. Well, it was still a renovation, technically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we ought to, uh, yeah. since they're not here, I think we'll, we'll pass them the yeah. application <laughs> and I think that's the right have them uh, <laughs> maybe advise them to come at the, to the next meeting with maybe some other alternatives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a really good idea. wrecking the entire, it's one thing if you can do one in, you know, in the back alley but I mean, this is street front. This is uh, That's a big what, what is the, the number seven here? Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house. Yeah. This is state and Maine. Well, <laughs> right on the front of a building. It might make well, it difficult for us to enforce other rules in the future if we yeah. let that one through. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district. Are we talking about the front facades of other design, other properties? Yeah. Okay. And again, recognition of and respect mm -hmm. for view quarters. I mean, this is one of the main quarters coming in, whether you're coming in on Main Street approaching state, yeah. or coming the other way, or coming down state approaching Maine. I mean, that's right there. Yep. <laughs> yep. I really like what's what's <laughs> preventing them, and I'm not sure what the ceiling is, whether it's a suspended ceiling in the AT&T space adjacent to it, what's preventing them from going across the ceiling, just a straight shot right out the side of the building towards the church, towards Bethany? I don't know, I don't know the architecture. And I mean, it's all, the other thing is, is all, the whole building is owned by one person. Yes. So Doug company, owns one, yeah, building. so, so you would it's think that they'd be able to. To work with work, another. Yeah, work with the other tenant tenants. Tenant. Yeah. Especially in ceiling space. Right. Again, right. what do they have now? Are they not required to have it now? I don't Venting. know. I don't know. Do you remember it was the vents that caught on fire at the head of the woods in Burlington? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Because yeah. they didn't bother to clean it frequently mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. And again, that was a long run. Yeah. Sort of like a long run up a building, huh? <laughs> yep. Okay. And again, what happens to warm grease when it goes outside and goes shooting up that far? 30 mm -hmm. some 40 feet of cold metal. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. The. You make the building hard. inspector has been out about as long as I've been out between illnesses and um, vacation time, so I don't know if he's even had a chance to look at this application. Um, so we're going to bite him as well. You have Chris to get it. In. Yeah, that's yeah. I'll have Chris and, and Bob Gowans keep a peek at it to double check on that issue because that seems like a really long way with lots of corners for a vent to be running from a restaurant. Okay, so they'll come back the next meeting or, or sometime after. Yep. 
And the next item on the agenda is approved minutes of the meeting on December the 2nd. Is everybody who was here then had a chance to look at the minutes? I did, and I have a couple of grammatical things. <laughs> well, I don't. I, I don't write the minutes. I proof them, but I don't okay. always catch it. So don't okay. don't feel bad. I'm fine with any yeah. edits. It seems yeah. The the um. Let me just point to it. It's easier to just okay. point to it. There are existing lighting, so a separate oh, application yep. doesn't need it. Should be there is. And in the next paragraph, optional changes are for a dark darker shade, and then it goes on and says is allowed. You don't need two verbs there. Yep. Um, optional change for a darker shade is is allowed would be fine. What can I say? It's the lawyer in me. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> that's, there are times I catch those things and times that I'm not as careful as I should be. Attorneys are always so careful with their wording. <laughs> Isn't that strange? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and our commas. <laughs> no, good. Thank you for catching those. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Any other comments, changes? Other than that, I think it's fine. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor of approving the December 2nd minutes? Minutes are approved. Anybody have anything else to add? Otherwise, oh. do I? I'm Hold sorry. Hold on. No, just a, I did send out an email towards the end of today um, sending out the public notice for the January 27th Planning Commission hearing on the revised proposal for revised design review regulations and the uh, amended overlay district boundaries. So take a look at that. You know, look through if you can make the hearing. Great, um, but it will also after that this sex, this chance for public comment. There'll be opportunities where design review committee or planning commission can meet, and, and planning commission and um, historic preservation commission can meet and discuss what the public's comments were. Um, and either would you resend that the last one that says attached R and there was no attachment? There wasn't an attachment. With what I sent it for? Not on mine. Okay. So, Sorry about that. That's okay. I will. That's bad because I went to three committees. <laughs> or if it, if it was there, I couldn't access okay. it for some reason. So, I will do. It. Thank you. So again, next meeting the twenty-first, Tuesday. Number Tuesday. It shows up in mine. Notice of public hearing. Yeah. yeah. Word attachment. Okay. I'll be send it to you, Okay. Steve. Thanks. Sorry. Do I hear a motion to adjourn if nobody has anything else? A second? A second. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.